Are you looking to get quality real estate data at your fingertips, whether it's from an API or by using a user interface? Well, no worries. I'm going to show you how to do that in a few easy steps split by three videos of how to use a stated to get not only property data, but you can also get deeds, taxes, boundaries, and more. My name is Ariel Herrera with the Analytics Ariel channel. We bridge the gap between real estate and technology. I have over seven years in the data analytics space as a data analyst and data scientist, so I've seen it all in terms of large data sets, and this data does a great job at combining them all. If this is the kind of content that you enjoy, then please subscribe as well as like this video so I know to make more videos just like it. All right, let's get started. If you're looking for real estate data and you've been browsing the internet, trying to figure out how to get your hands on it, besides copying and pasting information from Zillow or one of those similar sites, then you definitely have seen the problem of being able to get quality information at scale. So a little bit of a background at a stated of what it actually is, what the company does and how they provide value. A stated started back in 2014 and their whole mission was to be able to bridge data sources together so that you can see history of a property, not just when it's being sold at the moment, but whenever you need it to be. So the current issue is that even though there's other APIs out there that replicate Zillow, Redfin, and Realtor, the issues with those APIs is that they're by third parties and they're web scraping Zillow and the like to get data. So at any time, if one of those sites says, hey, we're putting more permissions, you're not going to be able to web scrape us, those APIs can shut down. Therefore, if you need a solution that's going to be for an app that you may have live on your website or a process where you're generating leads, you need to be able to append property data and it needs to be accurate, then a stated is the way to go. So a stated prides itself on being the Carfax of real estate data, having the whole history behind it. And some of the points that they have, which is actually very holistic, and I haven't really seen this in many other data sources, is they have information on parcels, improvements that were made to a house if it was made available, taxes, assessments, valuations, deeds, boundaries, and so much more. So they're getting this data from various data sources, such as CoStar, First American, CoreLogic, Black Knight, and straight from the county assessor. So let's dive straight into the website so we can get an understanding of actually inputting addresses and seeing what type of data that a stated can provide back to us. Right now I'm on a stated home page. This is where you can get an overview of all the nationwide data that they have and a high level explanation of the sub different tables that they also are able to provide. The way I actually found out about the stated was just going through reddits on real estate data sources and then I saw someone point towards it and my mind was blown of the type of quality and the large amount of data that they're able to have on a property. So if you go down to dive into our data, you can see, as I mentioned before, that they have a lot of information for a single property, including building data, historical deeds, tax assessments, and more. So what you would do if you want to be able to use their site, it's actually free for the first 100 API calls. For those that aren't aware what an API is, it's an application program interface. Just know that you can search for 100 properties for free before you have to pay anything directly. And just so that you're aware too, the API is 25 cents per call. So if you were to go over that free 100 and you decide you want to implement a stated data, for your app or whatever your use case is, then for each time you call the API, so each time you wanna get information for an address, it would cost 25 cents. And in that you would get information about parcel county data, ownership information, and if you want to get enhanced property data, it would be double the price, so 50 cents a call, and this would be historical taxes and assessments, property value, and boundaries. So let's assume you go straight into signing up. You then are met with a free API key that you'll be able to use for the 100 free calls. 
you would then be sent over to your own dashboard. And here on the right hand side, you could see API usage. And it shows that I've been started off with 100 free API calls and a breakdown as to how much I've used thus far. Next, if you want to be able to make a request to actually get data for properties, you could do it not just by property, but you could also do it by bulk. So this really is flexible if you want to either use an API or if you just want a user interface to get this data, they really provide either way. So the user interface would allow someone who's an analyst to make a request and put an Excel file and get information back. And in this instance, we're actually going to do a property lookup, which takes us to this page where we can input an address, city, and zip code. For this example, I selected a property within Tampa, the city that I live in. This is 2104 W Po Hodden Ave in Tampa. And I would take this address and input it into the left side panel. Once I do, I can hit look up property and then we get two different views. So the first is a report. This is just them summarizing some high level attributes that they have on the property. We could see on the right hand side, they have an estimated value or range. Next, if we go down to property details, we can see we have information on the property, including construction type. We have information on the legal description, the city that it's in, the type of walls that are in the interior and more. We also get information on the ownership and if they likely are living in the property or not, as well as assessments and deeds. For each of these deeds, we have more detailed information on the mortgage company, as well as any document IDs too, which I know could be really useful for appraisers. Now, even though this part is useful, just a high level overview, what is really great if you work with data is having a JSON response. And this JSON response has a lot more detail on here for the property. So we have, again, the assessments, market assessments, the deeds, which go into more detail now of the lender, loan type, loan due date, as well as the estimated amount on the loan. And this continues for all the deeds. In the next videos, I'm going to show you how to actually get this data using Python so that you can quickly get it for a list of properties. But as of right now, just know that the JSON file does give you even more information than that quick highlight report, which is really awesome. Now, there's one thing that I want to make sure that you're aware of when using a stated is sometimes the data could be a little bit backdated. And what do I mean by this? As I was trying to pull examples, one of them was for a recent property that went for sale, 503 W Birch Street in Tampa, which has really nice curb appeal and this was recently done. However, when I pulled up this property in a stated, it did say the estimated value was 157, which didn't make sense since it's going for 305 and had a price increase. So what's going on? Well, it's not that a stated is wrong. It's just that in this view, their most recent data pull is December 1st for 2021. So as of me recording this, this is about two months ago. So a stated is really great in the sense that they do have a map of coverage. So based on your city, they may be pulling data faster than with others um, based upon what the basis is of those data sources. So it's really important if you're looking to use a stated data, you're aware of how often it's updated for your city. And you can also talk to someone on the direct team for that. And just for curiosity, since they do have access as an agent to the MLS in Tampa, I wanted to see what did this property look like if, you know, they flipped it and it's going for double the amount of what the estimated value was before back in August of 2021, what did it actually look like? As an agent, I can go straight into the MLS, input the old MLS number for the previous listing. And from what you could see, it is night and day from the property beforehand. No curve appeal at all and did not have central air. If we look at the backyard, a large part of it was inhabitable. And if we look at the kitchen and the space within it, it just wasn't very appealing and it wouldn't have catered to a lot of renters out there today. So there definitely was a lot of work here. And 
I just myself am pretty amazed how the pictures came out afterwards. Really, really cool flip. So that's an overview of a stated recap is if you're looking to just prototype whatever tool or something on an ad hoc basis to get property data, I would still go with those third party APIs that scrape Zillow, Redfin or Realtor. But if you have an application that you're looking for for reliable data, maybe you're going to host this on your website then definitely look at a stated as a really great tool to be able to get holistic data and historical data on a property. Hope this has been really helpful. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and more data tips will be coming. Thanks.